Welcome to Jack Everett Gaming, and today I wanted to do something a little bit differently. As uh, any of my regular viewers know, I enjoy video games of all sorts, including nostalgic video games, and so I'm very driven by nostalgia. And so today I wanted to share with you this book that I got, and it is called The Winner's Guide to Nintendo. And I got this book in a book order when I, when I was very young, I, I don't know, like somewhere between 8 and 11 years old. And it's just like I was flipping through the book order and they're like, oh, there's a book about Nintendo. Mom, get this book for me. And, you know, it was like 2 $3 or whatever. And so she's like, fine, I'll get you your book on Nintendo. And I don't know really why I wanted this because I don't know what I was expecting it to be. I think all the book order showed was the cover of the book and then um, maybe there was a little blurb about it. But on the back, there's more information about it. And what it says is, is the sizzling action of Super Nintendo is here with hot tips and winner strategies for four new mega games. And then it has the Super Nintendo games. And then it says, play like a pro when you play the newest, hottest NES games. This book is packed with full color photos of actual game screens, secret codes, and insider information for, and then there's a bunch of games, and then plus action playing tips for these Game Boy blockbusters. So like this book makes itself out to be like really exciting. Now the front cover of it of course makes no sense whatsoever. Like there's like a starfish, you know, and another fish, and then like this kind of looks like Tony the Tiger or something. I can't even tell what it is. But like none of these characters or drawings on the front of this book have anything to do with any Nintendo game. So I get this book and I'm all excited to get it. And I open it up. And like the first thing is Super Mario World, which I, I only cared about Nintendo. Like I only had Nintendo. I did not have Super Nintendo. But I still thought it was way awesome to just read about um, uh, Super Mario World. Because I remember this screenshot here in particular. Let me see if I can't uh, show it. This screen screenshot in particular, which has like a big bullet. Because I knew from m the first Mario game that there were little bullets in Mario that were like the same size as regular size Mario, but this one had a huge bullet. And I just remember reading through this and thinking, oh man, Super Mario World looks so awesome. Like giant keyholes like right here and stuff like that. And that's what this book had to offer. This is actually the first time I ever saw Castlevania because I didn't play Castlevania, but this had uh, this the guide for Castlevania 4. And then another game called Gradius 3. And then F-Zero, and I was like, oh man, F-Zero is 3D. I really wish I had a Super Nintendo. But for whatever reason, we ended up getting uh, Sega Genesis instead of Super Nintendo. But then, then it gets into the Nintendo section, and the first game was Star Trek. And I just remember reading about this Star Trek game, and it just looks so fascinating to me. Because I'd never seen any video game like it before. I mean, like, it just looks like the characters from the the tv show and like you're on the bridge and stuff like that and like you get a beam down and like there's this picture of the transporter you know the guy running the transporter thing and then like this just really described this really awesome game and that's basically what this book ended up being to me is it ended up being more of an advertisement and it just got me really interested in this star trek game and really all the games in it like where in time is Carmen San Diego? It's like I read through this book and I'm like, I want to get these games. Battletoads I had played and Battletoads Battletoads is just a terrible game. Te Battletoads is a terrible game in the guise of being a good game. But then there was this game Shatterhand and I'm like, well, this looks awesome. I want to play a game where you punch people so hard that you shatter your own hand. And then it had Barbie. And I'm like, Barbie? Why the heck would someone wanting a winner's guide to Nintendo care about some Barbie game? But I still read about it and stuff. And really this whole book feels like it's just an advertisement for these games. Because if you actually read what it has to say, it doesn't say much. It doesn't say much at all about any of these games in it whatsoever. And it, like most of the games it covers maybe one, one to three levels of the game and that's it. So it's like whoever wrote this you know, really didn't put a lot of work into creating a winner's guide because it doesn't tell you how to win the games. It tells you how to win maybe one or two levels. And then, of course, there was this game Pirates. Every game in here just looked so awesome to me. But in particular, this one called Crazy Land. And I remember reading this and I'm like, oh man, this Crazy Land game looks so awesome. 
But you know what? I can never find this Crazy Land game in stores. Because you know why? Crazy Land never came out in America. This game just simply doesn't even exist. There is no game called Crazy Land. There was supposed to be a game called Crazy Land, and there is some kind of Japanese version of the game, and there's possibly a European version of the game. But the game doesn't even exist. And then there was Tom and Jerry, and this game also looked awesome to me. But really, a lot of these are just really bad games. And Daydream and Davey, another just really bad game. I mean, a lot of these games have appeared on Angry Video Game Nerd. But uh, the ones that interested me the most, uh, it was uh, Star Trek. Star Trek I eventually got our family to get. Shatterhand interested me a lot as well. Crazy Land inter interested me a lot. And then uh, this one, this next one, which is Bill and Ted's Excellent Video Game Adventure. I just remember reading about this game and it talked about how you got to go through the phone booth, uh, the phone booth circuitry. And I'm like, man, this Bill and Ted's game looks so awesome. Of course, Angry Video Game Nerd has done an episode on it, and it, it just genuinely looks like a terrible, horrible game. And so really, a lot of these are just really bad games. And then there was King's Quest V and Micro Machines. And then it got sort of the Game Boy games, which I wasn't that interested in, like some Simpsons game. Uh, then there was another Castlevania game, which I was wondering what this Castlevania thing was when I was reading this book because like there was a game on Game Boy and on Super Nintendo so it must be something interesting but I did find out what it was much later and then there's some helicopter game who framed Roger Rabbit some Mega Man game and then some racing game but here's what's interesting about this game Th this book I mean this book is just a really bad book now whoever wrote this knew how bad it was because you will not find an author credited anywhere you will not find an author credited for writing this book absolutely anywhere in this book because they were ashamed of what they wrote. Like, this book was an embarrassment. I mean, they have the game Crazy Land in there, which wasn't even a Nintendo game. I mean, this was literally just schlock put together for kids to see the word Nintendo and then buy it. And that's what it was, and that's why I bought it. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I got my two or three dollars worth of fun out of this. Well, actually, I guess it says four ninety five US, six fifty Canadian. But I definitely got $5 worth of fun out of this. But still, this is the kind of stuff that just tricks kids into, you know, buying buying a book that really doesn't have any information in it. I mean, the pictures were interesting enough. And, like, I was very interested in the Star Trek game. And I did get the Star Trek game. And eventually I got the Bill and Ted's game as well. But that is really just a horrible game. Like, that game's unplayable. And so, anyway, I just wanted to share that book with you because it's a book that has brought me a lot of nostalgia. And it's just a really bad book, but it still brings me a lot of happiness to know that I have it today and I can still flip through and look at all the pictures and I can play these games now, you know, because like games are much easier to get your hands on these days. Well, this has been Jack Everett Gaming. Thanks for watching this special episode and we'll talk at you later. Bye bye.